Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 35 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is July 8th, 2019. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my conspiratorial co-host, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. Uh, Bill, could you explain your uh, headgear for the audio-only <laughs> listeners today who are not the beneficiary of visuals? Th- there are soothers everywhere. <laughs> they're, they're coming for my emotions. <laughs> They want to take them from my brain. And now that uh, he's done that, if I can paint a picture with words, he is wearing a hat made of aluminum foil. Oh, yeah. well, we'll be here to sing our outro later today. There's a reason for that. You know why? Because this episode, like kiss, this episode is different from most. Because tonight we are going through the mailbag and we're discussing some of the aluminum foil hat theories our listeners have sent us. They're just like tinfoil hat theories, but aluminum because there's soothers and rioters everywhere. Dun dun dun. Okay, we're now topical. just a, now just as a heads up, <laughs> so everybody knows, that means there will be spoilers from all across the Cosmere. Everything is fair game tonight, so you've been warned. Yep. But my headphones are falling off, so I'm going to remove this thing and just trust that. Oh, I don't want to trust that there's no. You should have just foiled the room. But they're going to take my brain waves. You just got to foil the room. Uh, shoot. My plans have been foiled. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. We're now, just starting that. We're, this is where we're starting, people. <laughs> For our uh, listeners and viewers who watch the podcast after we've uploaded it onto YouTube or to all of the podcast apps, we do want to remind you that you can actually interact with us and join in the conversation as we record each episode live at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record our episodes every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Please join us. Take part in the discussion. Throw crazy theories at us to distract us as we're recording normal episodes as well. And join in the the peanut gallery while we're recording episodes like this one, because these are the episodes where people get fun. (laughs) Yeah, before Uh, everyone else was just faking it. Indeed. (laughs) Something like that. Oh, okay. So first off. Does everybody understand the reference in Cosmere to aluminum foil hats? Yes. It's one of my favorite stealth puns, that, or not puns, but stealth jokes that Brandon's put in. Because mm-hmm. in Era 2 of Mistborn, there are hats that are lined with aluminum to prevent the uh, emotional alumency. And it's yep. wonderful. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I was just like, they've got tinfoil hats! <laughs> <laughs> and okay. it was really clearly Brandon having way more fun than he should be allowed to have. <laughs> but it makes sense, too. That's the best part. It make, it, that's the thing, is it works really well in mm-hmm. the universe. And I want to know if that's been a th- been on his mind since the very beginning, <laughs> or if he was just, re- like, one day sitting here is like, aluminum? Hats? Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and his wife found him in a coma, and he's just like, aluminum hats! <laughs> aluminum hats! Major League well, Baseball maybe we should is actually scanning get my brain. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. So, uh, Jordan, do you want to introduce our... F- oh, just to explain, the aluminum foil hat theories that we're discussing are ones that have been sent in by our listeners. Um, and we'll be doing more of these episodes in the future. So if you have your own theories that you want us to discuss, feel free to email us at cosmerestudies at gmail.com. Um, so let's just dive on in. Jordan, why don't you take our first one? All right. Um, the first one we have is from Josh P. Um, and he asks, what do you three think would happen if Shy were to try and reforge Kaladin's soul to make it so he was never a slave? Do you think the stamp would take it all? If so, could Shy also successfully remove his slave brands? Personally, I don't think any stamp regarding his slavery would take it all, as we saw through his tattooed... We saw, as we saw through his tattoo failed... I think it's me. 
Failing, saw, maybe. As we all saw through his tattoo failing to heal because he thought of himself so strongly as having been a slave and having those brands as part of his own ideal of himself. This isn't to say that the stamps couldn't work. I just don't think they would. Have a good one. Okay, so on this one, you know, this is clearly a reference to The Emperor's Soul for those of you who haven't read it. But I... It, it, it's a t- it's a tough conversation because, first off, it, it really is such a big part of his identity to himself. Mm-hmm. You know, he to the point where he actually wants to keep the tattoo and it heals off, but the brands remain. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the other thing that's interesting about soul stamping a living person is the more people who know they've been stamped, the less likely it is to take. And so it'd almost have to be without his knowledge, for one. Like if he went through something that the emperor did. Right. Like if he, if he had a concussion of or some other coma or something like that. Then I could see it maybe, maybe uh-huh. taking. But if anybody got some kind of memory or had or referenced him having it, I think it would stop working. Honestly, but, it... But yeah. What I think she would have to do is she'd have to change, not he was never a slave, but just how an event in his past played out. Mm-hmm. You know, like perhaps it was, it isn't, he was never a slave, but perhaps he never went to war in the first place. Yeah. So take it you know, further back. You'd have to go kind of further back rather than, you know, just, I, I just feel like it would be possible, but it would take somebody of, Sky, of Shai's skill. Yeah, like how and, she can take herself back to becoming a warrior or something mm-hmm. like that, like a really drastic change. It would have to take a lot of right. differences. Th- and I think the other, well. the other problem, and this is where we're getting into investiture interfering with things, is he's already invested by the Nahal yeah. bond. That's and true. he's been And he's been tied, according to Syl, and we'll get into some of this maybe a bit later, a long time ago. And so right. she could do all the research she wants, um, but she can't research his connection to sill true and so i don't think it's possible at all because he's just far too invested for it to ever take right yeah. i mean and yeah it's one of those in an ideal setting it'd still be difficult like i mean perhaps before he took the first oath but each it feels like each oath sort of connects him more and more and I think it would make it more difficult because the the bond would still become stronger, which means it fills in the cracks in his spirit web, which means he is actively more invested. Mm. Yeah. So that's that's my theory. But I thought it was an interesting discussion, and it's also an interesting idea that it would be harder to uh, soul stamp maybe someone from. Uh, oh, dang it! What? Nalthus. What? Nalthus, because they all have just slightly more investiture yeah yeah unless there's a drab a drab would be very easy to because yeah. they have slightly less that's true well it, to the point where they have less identity less connection a little bit just a little bit less of everything so mm-hmm. there's it almost feels like they're more of a blank slate you're right yeah and so huh. i don't know it, get, it gets to a very interesting spot with some of those uh concepts yeah. mm-hmm. um our, our next one actually is also from Josh P and I, I put these close together just because they it one sort of leads into the other. Um, he he sent us another email. It says, "Hey crew, I had a th- another thought about soul stamps after the second Emperor Soul episode. What do you three think would happen in the very hypothetical and unlikely scenario that a shard moves over to sell as close to my pawn as can be for the sake of soul stamping potency, and the best forger of all time could be shy or anyone who's ever been or ever will be or better than her stamped a physical manifestation of a shard's vessel." We need to assume here that they had a very good understanding of the vessel's history, perhaps Hoyd working with them to test essence marks. Either way, assume it's the ideal situation for this. Would the stamp be able to make a change to the shard somehow? Um, So here's the thing. Again, we we talked about how invested objects are more difficult to, to stamp. Shards are basically pure investiture with some consciousness thrown in. And so I honestly don't think that even with the best uh, forger in history or in ever possible would really be able to do this. 
just It'd because to... it's fighting so hard. It almost have to be like Odium, who is a forger, doing it with all of his investiture. Yeah, because well, it, it would and... have, it would have to be a ton of investiture, more than I think a person could normally hold. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's it's <clears throat> it takes more investiture to overwrite someone than they already have, mm-hmm. and it would ha- it would take out an Alcium levels of investiture to override a shard. That's what yeah, that's how I feel about it too. It's just rough. It's a lot. It's over nine thousand. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> over nine thousand. There are other numbers that it could be, but it's definitely at least oh, over right. five thousand. Doc nice. FG uh, brings up a very interesting question in chat. He says, "Could you forge someone that was a drab into somebody with more breaths?" My Probably? instincts say no, because Brand. I, my instincts say hundred percent no. Actually, just because Brandon's. Brandon's pretty good about uh, not being able to multiply investiture unless he intended it from the beginning. Like with uh, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I have no idea. Compounding? Compounding, thank you. Where that was clearly designed from the beginning. Well, and it's also, um, it's not, the, the metals aren't actual investiture. The metals grant access to investiture. mm and so I think basically what happens is you, you're sort of tapping your stored investiture and then it's enhancing by accessing other investiture through burning the metals. Yeah. And so it just sort of yeah. flows in and supercharges what's already there. Yeah. Well, and it's also because the, the reason it works is because the, the where, where Allomancy actually gets its fuel is from preservation itself. Mm hmm. And so basically what you're doing is you're hacking the code into making the preservation entity give you more power than you're supposed to have. Mm-hmm. And, and Brandon has talked about how this is like a lot of the stuff is based upon his time playing collectible card games like magic, where you start combining effects to get more, more than you're supposed to get out of it. Right. But he still has a, a source for the fuel. Now, that source is, for all intents and purposes, got infinite power in that preservation is one sixteenth of a deity. And, you know, diet god is still god, as was quoted to me once. <laughs> and uh, it's just one of those things. How are you going to get, get through that? And it's, it's going to be, got to be something more powerful. So I don't think we can multiply it through making a drab and making them think they have more investiture than they should through a stamp. Um, cause the power has to come from somewhere. And so in the end, I think in doing so you have to be connected to a near infinite power source to make something like that stick. And even then they wouldn't be able to do it probably outside of cell right. where you have to that be- connection to that emphasis, infinite power source. Yeah. yeah cause to, to be fair, they, you know, that is a uh, a near infinite power source is the the door itself, yeah. yeah. Which is in, you know, so I doubt you could do it off of cell, but honestly, I think it would be possible to stamp somebody. I mean, I don't the, the stamp I don't think would last that long because so much investiture is involved. But I think it'd be you know you could probably get a stamp to take for maybe ten minutes or so. Yeah, for like the five minute test thing that she was doing with. <clears throat> I can't remember his the, name now. The, the one yeah. minute test with uh, Ga- Gaudon. 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 Or Gaudon. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, well, cause, and you also have the weird component of geography that uh, yeah. that goes on with with cells to where it's like, okay, this will work. But you couldn't, like, make someone an Elantrian right. because mm-hmm. they have to be close to Elantris for that the, to occur. They also have to be from Elantris. I mean, so. Yeah. And so you could change someone to be like, oh, I'm, you know, my history says I'm from Elantris. It could be conceivable that I would uh, get this thing. And it's like, yeah, all these things could happen, but it it stretches the bounds of plausibility. And by the time you get there, it's just too far. It's stamped. Yeah. And the stamp fails. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like I've read something about this in a word of Brandon, actually. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. It's a very good question. Oh, actually, here here it is. So the word of Brandon. Somebody asks, 
If you soul stamp somebody to give them a connection to Erlon and they become an Elantrian, could they become an Elantrian? Could they become an Elantrian? And if the soul stamp is removed, would they remain? Brandon's response says, okay, so you're asking a better one than people have asked. So you say you get soul stamped, you move to Erlon, your soul thinks that it that it is this. You do have spirit web of connection. I will go ahead and raffle this with the caveat of why it might not work is because you might think you're something, right? That doesn't necessarily mean like this isn't completely invisible and things like this. So whether the power is going to follow those lines of connection or not, I'll leave up to discussion, but it's a possibility worth theorizing upon. Hmm. So they say, so the soul stamp doesn't necessarily change the core of your spirit web. He says it does, but it's overriding it. It's like hemallergy. What you are is still there underneath when it's ripped away, right? So basically, Raffo is what Brandon gave us. <laughs> <laughs> that <Dead> gummit. <laughs> that man can say a lot without saying anything at all. He should be a politician. So <laughs> no. No, we need him writing No, that. he needs to be an author. He needs to yes. stay an author. Maybe after seven Sanderson bots are completed. <laughs> now we need at least 16 for, for the synergy. I don't, to, no, to no, I don't action. want him to be too powerful. He's going into politics. <laughs> <laughs> they, the, the Sanderson bots will be given free will. <laughs> oh, that It'll be one. <laughs> <laughs> There's no problems there, right? Oh, no, never. We've never seen any sort of... <sighs> situation when, we're, give, when have, we're giving when ha- machines free will has turned out poorly it's never mm-hmm. gone poorly no <laughs> i don't think anyone's even wrote, i don't think anyone's written written any books that cover that topic either no should we skip to that one um, that'd be a good that, that that that's topical i like that do we have that one in yes uh-huh. we do yeah amy you yeah, want so to just that's, go ahead mine. so this is from sam k um i'm gonna summarize a little bit so there let's see it's a great little so, segue. <laughs> we, I was like, wait, wait, we took and talk about this. So um, when we were talking about white sand and autonomy, and it's like, I don't think it was something you actually said, but the discussion around it kind of made something click. Um, for a bit of background, I work in the marine technology sector where autonomous vehicles and robots for environmental monitoring, naval defense, etc. are really becoming quite popular. Okay, first, could I interject? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> like just being able to say, I work in... The marine, marine technology. technology sector where autonomous vehicles are... I'm just like, you're using all the cool words in a row right now. <laughs> anyway, going anyway, on. So they're, they were wondering about the name of autonomy and the avatars and wondering if they could, could be linked to a kind of Asimov's Rules of Robotics-esque scenario, which we were referencing. Um, you mentioned that Hoyd might be friendly or at least tolerated by one of the avatars. And I was wondering if you think they might be linked somehow to the avatars becoming self-aware and developing their own personality over time. Um, And it could also loosely, very loosely, tie in with autonomy being the ultimate villain for the Cosmere and might be a parallel that Brandon is drawing with today's society and the fear of AI, etc. So. Okay. So I think we've seen evidence of this already. Like, I think that the avatars do develop their own free personalities. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, in in the letter, it says, we've given this avatar our particular dislike of you. (laughs) Which means they have different personalities. And I think Mm -hmm. if they were all had the same personality, it would be a lot easier to find them all. Right. And 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 Yeah. And Hoyt is on friendly-ish terms with at least one of them. One of them, yeah. So I, I think there, I don't know if there would be kind of rules, but I can see there being some kind of guidelines to keep them being part of autonomy that that's like their core of their personality uh-huh. or something and from there they could branch out but i don't know what those constraints would be because we don't i don't know enough about autonomy to really know what I, I, those core things would be for sure i think this sort of plays into a theory i posited a couple episodes ago where um we were talking about how the the what is it the Iriali myth of the one where they talk about how everyone oh, is a part yes. of the one, the one. And we all affect each other and, but, and all but that. Th- how they all split off to go and experience all these different things as part of the one so that the one can experience everything that again, to me sounds just like autonomy. Yeah, I could see that. And, and so 
I was I was part of the ones when I first read that. I my first thought was at Anulsium, mm-hmm. but and uh, that was my first thought too. But it's one of those like oh, second thought maybe it well, could be that as well. Well, and the first time I read it, I don't think I'd read like Brandon hadn't been as open yet about things about autonomies, avatars, and stuff like that. And so mm-hmm. the the bit that he's revealed since I first read it makes me just start thinking, okay, this is about autonomy. This is like, which, and he's said something about, you know, how the Iriali aren't nat- uh, native to Roshar, but they're also not like, they didn't come over with the regular humans. They're, they're sort of distinct from humans. Mm-hmm. And part of me just keeps thinking more and more, they've got some tie to Taldane or autonomy in some way. If it's whether from Taldane or from a world where, where, Bavadin has sent an avatar somewhere. I, I and feel then like transplanted them somehow. I feel like they're connected to autonomy somehow. All I know is if they're from Taldane, boy, that's a that's a geography switch going from uh, sandy to uh, hey, there's water everywhere, literally water. everywhere. Well, you also haven't seen Dark Side yet, so. Yeah, I, no, I, I'm a fan of DC comic books. I've seen Dark not, Side a lot. Not Dark S E I D, Dark Side, like S-I-D-E. the opposite of Day Side. Not Apocalypse. And weren't Taldane. they? Aren't the Iriali? Aren't they like yellow? Like they're they've got sort of a golden golden thing going on. Yeah. Okay. You know, like people do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Doc F G mentions. Uh, the fact that Pachi is so ornery makes me think that autonomy isn't very friendly. But again, there are, you know, there are avatars of autonomy that behave differently. Yeah, we saw Trell. He he smiled. <laughs> Brandon Brandon has said that there are entire planets or there are entire there are planets where entire pantheons are all autonomy. <laughs> Male Uh-oh. and female. <laughs> Weird. I'd forgotten about that. So Yeah. I don't, it, it's really difficult to speculate on autonomy just because of how little we've like, despite having two books on his world mm-hmm. or her world. It's it's a her, right? It's her. Bavadin. Bavadin is female. OK. And autonomy just, has been both. That has Bavadin just sounds like a guy's name. So I keep saying him. And I'm just. Oh, Brandon was cagey about that until earlier this year. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. OK. Yes. I feel better then. But like, um, and for a long time, people thought Bavadin was a he. OK. At least I'm not alone. Um, but the uh, the thing that I was going to say is it's really hard to speculate on much with Bovidin just because of how little we do know. Mm-hmm. And so it's one of those things where someone asks a question. It's like, could Bovidin be? And the answer is, I mean, yeah, could be. <laughs> could be. I have no evidence to the contrary. <laughs> I have no evidence to the to the positive. Mm hmm. I, I like how the questioner continued. It said, this also very, very loosely could be could tie in with autonomy being the ultimate villain for the Cosmere. It might be a parallel that Brandon is drawing with today's society and the fear of AI. Just like, oh. Uh, I, like I feel like the AI thing has been done a lot. Yes, it has. So, so I'm a little hesitant to say that Brandon's doing that, but you never know with autonomy. Yeah. Well, and the, the AI thing, I think, is an interesting angle just because it's so... When you think autonomy, you think, oh, free from others' influence and stuff. But there is that other definition of autonomy where it's it does things on its own. And mm-hmm. autonomy could, in a... Like, Self-sufficiency. Yeah, 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 and how it could be viewed as a sort of the same way I think think i mean we've seen even less of uh of endowment but i do think it could be similar to in my mind how endowment works where she likes to sort of create things and create beings and if you viewed autonomy from that perspective of giving it sentience and such Mm -hmm. that would be a form of autonomy not for autonomy himself but in the form of a parent trying to make something more uh Sufficient or yeah, or self-sufficient, not self-sufficient. dependent mm-hmm. upon yeah. himself. Well, another so, thing that Brandon I'd has never said considered ab- that. Another thing that Brandon has has said about autonomy that I find interesting is that 
of the shards, autonomy has no desire to rejoin or come together because autonomy wants to remain autonomy. And mm-hmm. joining with another one would taint them and yeah. make them something else. And autonomy just wants to be autonomous and sort of go away, leave me alone. I'm going to do my thing, but I'm going to do it better than anyone else because I can do it, everything. Well, at the same time, meddling. Because mm-hmm. they're doing yeah. their thing. Autonomy is such an interesting <laughs> concept because she is quite the hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I mean, Bran has never dealt with those characters either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's completely unique. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's It's an interesting concept and it's one of those we've done it at the same time. If Brandon tried his hand at it, I'm interested because uh-huh. he's going to approach it from a very weird angle because he's approaching it through magic. And the mm-hmm. only thing we've seen that even remotely closely comes to like autonomous beings that you create like that is going to it's going to be from endowments magic system. And we've seen a little bit of that and we've seen how horrifying Nightblood can be. Yeah, well, and the, the, and the, the lifeless. A- and there's also the a- aeons, right? The, the seons. Seons. Yeah, yes. The, that are splinters of... Well, and, uh, and, mm-hmm. I was going to say, and the sprint, except that they predate the... the yeah, the yeah they were, they were apparently and, around before, but they got yeah. changed a little bit. And then they've sort of been adopted, I guess. Yeah. Or something. Oh, it's, man. It's really not clear. <laughs> we've only got uh, like what six more books or something something crazy yeah jordan do you yeah. want to speaking of spren and their sort of nature do you want to go ahead and introduce the next one next question yes yes okay sorry i had to find it since we number four order. sorry yeah no worries um so this was from delise De- De- delise okay delise. i'm guessing delise if we I, maybe said it wrong, I just we apologize. I, she she put a pronunciation. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it the oh, okay. the the cell way, and it's Del Delaisi and uh, Delaisi K. Delaisi. <laughs> That's right. It would be Delaisi in cell. Delai. Anyway, Delai-ese. sorry, I'm having too much fun with too many vowels. Um, no, she actually hey put a pronunciation in her email. It's Delise, oh, and you didn't give it to me. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, hey guys, thanks for taking time to podcast about the most epic author ever. You're welcome. On page 77 of Oathbringer, Syl says, Besides, there was another voice, pure, with a song like tapped crystal, distant, yet demanding. Then she flies away. Storm at Syl. Could this be cultivation she was hearing? Cultivation seems like she would be interested in developing bonds, as that would help both people and Spren grow and develop. Love to hear your thoughts when you get to this tome. Well... Lucky for you, we're going to do it before we get to this tome. So I yep. reread that section just because I was like, okay, what was the context of this? Yeah, I um, had to read it too because I haven't gotten mm-hmm. that yet. Yeah, this is when Kaladin has just gotten back to Hearthstone and he has met his parents and stuff's going on. And Syl comes down and is like, oh, your parents are how I remember them. And he's like, you didn't know them. Yeah, but I still remember them. That doesn't make any sense. It's like we didn't know each other, and she's like, "Yeah, but honor knew, honor you. You're of you're, you're of the winds. We're cousins, and it's like your honor spread." And she's like, "You know, she's laughing at how like, oh, silly Kaladin. It's so obvious type stuff. It's all connected. Winds. I think she says something like it's all connected and everything. The, too. Yeah, the the winds are of honor. It's all connected. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all connected. And then she says this line. Besides, there was another voice, pure, with a song like tapped crystal." distant yet demanding so the fact that she says a song is interesting because there is all sorts of musical things that go on with this planet yes um Mm. all the harmonics and stuff yeah yeah. and so i uh i mean i don't know if it's cultivation just because the the fact like tapped crystal distant yet demanding um, tapped crystal doesn't make me think of cultivation because of all the vines, but then in the same breath, I'm like, well, but then we see cultivation spread like Wendell, exactly. who are moving crystals, but they move like vines. Yeah. They look and... like vines, and then he sort of dissolves into crystal. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, and so it's one of those like I don't well maybe uh, I don't look. Well, it plus hurts. if you plus if you think about it, crystals do grow. Yeah. Just yeah, and, and so it's one of those things. It's not to. it's not what I would think of at first, but it's the more I think about it, it, it could be her. It, I mean, it it is obviously the most obvious candidate because Syl wouldn't be like, oh, a pure song like tapped crystal if it was like odium. Because if it was Odium, it'd be like, it sounded like pain and terror and everyone was not having a good time. And red thunder and lightning and all that, yeah. I don't think Odium's going to get any sort of uh, songs like Tapped Crystal. Also, if you think about it, Brandon has told us that, um, oh, what's his name? Tian had progressed moderately far in becoming a, 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 a light weaver himself. Like this is pure word, word of Brandon. Oh, that's right. That's right. And I wh- forgot which that. means that there was probably a cryptic around, which are are tied to cultivation. Mm. Could it also have been uh, a truth watcher. What could have? Uh, Tian. I'm just. I'm just thinking. No, Brand- like tap- Bra- Brandon has said he was a light. He was. Oh, on his oh, way he to did. Okay, I I missed that somewhere. Yes. Okay. If if you notice the things that Tian noticed, like the the specific colors on the rock that he wanted to show Kaladin. He's like, hey, look, if, when you get it wet, you can see all these different strata and Kaladin saw a rock. But t- if Tian was on his way to becoming a light weaver, that meant he saw light and heard sounds differently than mm-hmm. other people. And so he actually would have recognized these sort of things when Kaladin may have just seen a rock. He, he but- paid close attention to the way these things yeah. looked. And so, but he, but he has said specifically cryptic. Brandon has said specifically that Tien was on the way to becoming a light weaver. Okay. I guess it's because because my thought is the, a lot of Tien's traits remind me a lot of Renarin. Mm-hmm. Um, just le- less with math, but more with you know people right. and mm-hmm. how he notices them, and they're supposed to have light weaving powers as well. Yes, they do have light weaving powers, but Brandon has said Tian was becoming a light weaver, okay. which means we have multiple examples of light weavers now because we've seen Shallan and we've seen her squires and we've seen Tian and we've seen Elicar and now we have Hoyd. Mm. So Brandon likes light weavers. <laughs> yes. well, Hoyd doesn't feel like he counts for some reason. Mm, but Hoyd totally counts. He's on yeah. a different level. Because Hoyd's awesome shenanigans <laughs> yeah he mm. said that Tian of, uh, again looking at word of Brandon he says if you look closely through the first book you'll see Tian having some slight light weaving effects in the back of my head he was where Kaladin was during most of the first book where it wasn't really official but there was a sprint hanging around he was very close to by the time he left already done that I would say he never actually managed to get to get that bond working. Otherwise, perhaps things would have played out differently than they did. Mm. So, I mean, clearly, uh, <laughs> definitely, yeah. as death does tend to be an issue for most people. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Uh, he also said that as well as his, sorry, Ether A, as I don't know how to pronounce your name. I think that's right, but as well as his skill with wood carving was supposed to hint to it as well. Cause artistry have Tien, some sort Tien of, yeah. was an artist. He saw and heard things differently than mm-hmm. us normals do. <laughs> Normies. I don't know. It's, it's interesting as far as the sill. What, what was she thinking of at the time? I don't, I don't know uh-huh. that said, uh, I do think cultivation is probably the best bet. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, yeah, because it, you know, if she hadn't had the the f- word pure in there, then you might say, oh, maybe it was like one of the unmade. But pure, like crystal, does it make me think, okay, not unmade. This yeah. is the, not the, even. The only other thing I can think of that it might be, uh, just because we don't have any data on it, would be the mm-hmm. child. The um, sibling? Or sibling, not the child. Uh, yeah, the sibling. Um. That's but we have possible. no, we don't have any data, so it's just more of one of those. Well, what else that could is it be? Pure aluminum foil hat speculation. Wait, yeah. you mean you mean their younger brother? No, the, the, the no. child that we're talking about. 
you've got the Night Watcher, um, the Stormfather, and the sibling. Oh, I'd forgotten that. The, yeah, the third Bondsmith Spren. Oh, okay. That okay. we don't really know much about. Mm-hmm. And so that's the only other thing I can think of, but that's more because it could literally be anything else. Mm-hmm. Gotta throw, you know, ideas out there, see what sticks. And mm-hmm. that's the only other thing I can think of that might stick. But again, we're speculating on very, very little information. So, <laughs> yeah. So Take let's irresponsibly speculate more. Take everything with a <laughs> giant bucket of salt. Yes. So, um. Let's see, what's next? next so we had numbers. Was... Do we want to do the giant one, number three? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead with that one. Okay, so I'm going to do a lot of summarizing because this is, this is a very long one from Seth T. Um, I like the term that he came up with and Bill agreed that this is a fun <laughs> way of being a cause missionary. I'm hoping I'm saying that's right. Yes. But, uh, so let's so explaining, make this a thing. Cause, uh... <laughs> explaining Cosmere stuff to other people. And I actually realized when I was on my trip last week, I kind of was trying to, I was a little bit of a cause missionary because apparently my siblings didn't realize I was doing a podcast. I don't know how this happens, but, um, (laughs) for over a year. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. It's what happens. Um, so he was, Seth was talking about his conflict theory and this is referring to on, um, I know the name. What is the name? The brain Scadriel. Yes. On Scadriel and how, um, harmony could have gone in some different ways, including, going by discord, discord or by conflict depending on which bent you take on it because when you pick up a shard you can kind of put your own spin on it a little bit because there's your mentality and interpretation, your interpretation in there. of it yeah yeah and so since um cz was already kind of taoist and calm and, and all of those things generally he went with harmony and um and he's he's really pretty peaceful and interferes as little as possible. And then um, he references in the final empire, there's an epigraph about the hero of ages. He shall defend their ways yet shall violate them. He will be their savior that they yet they shall call him heretic. His name will be discord yet. They shall love him for it. Um, and so Seth was talking about how Discord, if, if Harmony had chosen to go that way, he would have been a much more calamitous and violent version of himself and would have been causing more problems and less development of Skadriel. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're having constant Discord, then you can't make society, you can't make technological advances. You, you have Discord going on. You can't do that. Um, and then, so Harmony is obviously better than Discord. But then there was also, and then he brings in a comparison, which I, I can relate to a little bit well, is he's talking about how Harmony is kind of like a grandfather who spoils his kids. And even Harmony comments on it, how he's like, well, I made um, the, the Ellendale Elendale Basin way too kind to them. So they didn't push themselves to advance in technology. He's like, you would, I can't remember what the technology was, but like they should have come up with some sort of technology. I think he said the radio. Was it the radio? Mm-hmm. Anyway, but yeah, like there was something he's like, you guys should have found that by now, but you didn't. Well, because if you think about it, the technology level in the final empire was supposed to be pre-industrial revolution. Yeah. But like uh, just before the advent of gunpowder almost. Mm-hmm. I and could so, see that, yeah. You know, because you've, cause you've got some, some steam-based technology going on even. Mm-hmm. And so it feels, and so you think about this is 300 years later. Yes, there was, to be fair, there was an apocalypse that they kind of (laughs) had to drag. But Sezed gave them all sorts of information. He gave them food and he gave them books Mm -hmm. of all sorts of information to kind of help preserve the culture. And so hopefully there shouldn't have been too much regression, even if there was an enormous stall. Yeah, and he, but, he doesn't want it to stagnate too much, but... But the fact that it took 300 years for them to get from, like, you know, late 1700s, early 1800s to... to the turn of the century, which is, it's you know, essentially a, essentially what would be a 100-year gap, 
it's slower than it should have been. Yeah. Um, so then anyway, so continuing what Seth is, I think it's Seth is talking about, um, is making conflict instead of harmony. And so that's where you are, have it so that life isn't quite as easy for people. And so they have to do a little bit more work and a little bit more struggle to improve mm-hmm. themselves. Um, because he, struggle essentially strengthens you. Yeah. But people get lazy when they have it too easy, which my children are prime examples of. Right. And I, and it's really hard to force them to struggle their way through things when I can easily just do the thing for them in like two minutes. Right. But if I do that thing for them every time, then they never learn to do it and they become lazy slugs and I become angry and I'm overworked and they don't progress Mm -hmm. because it's with struggle and conflict that you learn how to do things and how to take care of yourself and be autonomous or anything else, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it's just kind of interesting. And so he's, he's just talking about how he's, he's theorizing that maybe harmony will change and become more like conflict to kind of help push the Scadrians to become more like, cause we know in um, the fourth version, era, four. era four. Yes. There's a word. It was gone. They have space flight, which if they're taking this long to get steam power and cars, then they are going to have to speed it up a little bit, or it's going to be a really long road to get there. Right. Because era two is pretty much right between um, books, the first five and the, um, the second five books in Stormlight. Okay. And yeah. so, so, you know, they'll they'll have to figure out space flight and FTL technology. Even I believe is, is they're going to mm. eventually hit. Okay. So the things he brings up, I th- I think are interesting. Um, the one thing I would say is that um, it's just not so much against uh, his theory; is more just. Shards do have the ability to sort of how they view things matters at the same Mm -hmm. time. I think as time goes on, that matters less and less. Um, And my evidence for that is what little we know of ruin before he took up the, uh, the shard. Mm -hmm. They told us he was a good guy. And so my personal theory there is they probably took him and gave him ruin as a shard because He's got, oh, he's got, he's really wise. He has a really good outlook on things. And if anyone should have this, it should be him because his outlook will help us sort of keep this in check and keep it the healthy side of ruin, which is not just the, the death and destruction, but the peace with these things and 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 normal decay and natural processes and things like that. And the natural process of entropy, but over time, the power overtook him. I think the reason Sezed gets to keep so much of who he is is because of is both the blessing and the curse of what he's done. His mm-hmm. shards are at such odds with one another that he gets to keep a lot of himself. And so he gets to, I think, shape it much more than another would because of how he took up the powers and his, yeah. own, his own experience. Now, the thing he says about conflict, I don't think it's necessarily uh, in pardon the pun conflict with harmony Mm -hmm. um is is a concept because in his own thing he talks about how harmony is balance well says that has admitted he has been too soft Mm -hmm. on on skadriel to start and Mm -hmm. now he's starting to make things a bit harder for them to help try and push them forward he's sort of automatically balancing himself out well Mm -hmm. it's almost like because another thing that's been mentioned is you could also say that um, that ruin, another word for ruin in, in this sense that it's been presented is change. And he mm-hmm. it feels like says it's almost been leaning a bit towards preservation a bit. And now it's just, you know, it, 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 it's this balancing act. It's this, you know, he's got something pulling in either direction. And if he leans one way or the other, it sort of balances out. And so if he sort of lets up on fighting ruin a bit, then change and progression can actually take place. Mm-hmm. It's you know, it says that is such an interesting concept in the scheme, greater scheme of the Cosmere, not only because, you know, the fact that he's a, a new player who's been introduced, 
a lot later in the game than the rest, but because he's got not just two shards, but two shards that are so diametrically opposed. Yeah. There's, there's not really a whole lot of forces that are that paired to, to be completely opposed to each other. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just the two he's got, but it's not just that he has two, but which two he's got. Yeah. And also just the fact that he has so much power, yet at mm-hmm. the same time, he, like you said, he's a new player to this power. Mm-hmm. And so suddenly, it you know, it'd be like giving, in some ways, it's like giving a caveman a machine gun. <laughs> where it's, he, you know, it's like, the he realizes, he can feel the power behind it, but he doesn't understand the context behind it. But at the and, same time, you also have one of the most humble individuals. So yeah. it's not just giving a caveman a machine gun, it's like giving Lao Tzu a machine gun. Yeah. You know, the, the founder of, of, of Taoism. So... <laughs> Yeah, and he's just trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with all Lots this? Of... Yeah, I wasn't going to try and correct you. I have no clue. But um, <laughs> Sorry, I've uh... actually been reading the, the, the Tao of Pooh lately, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? There, there's there, a book. I have it, too. There's a book. It's called The Tao of Pooh, where it follows <laughs> how Winnie the Pooh represents several different facets of Taoism. It's kind of cute. Fascinating book. You should check it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, that I don't know. It, it was an interesting uh, topic that Seth brought up. Sorry we couldn't read it all, Seth, but uh, as you said, it was an essay. And yeah. uh, we do have other people we want to cover. Well, K- Kenny in chat actually d- does mention, he says, Brandon has said that Harmony has been doing something with the extra ruin, but what if he's extracting too much of the ruin and that's pushing him towards preservation tendencies? Honestly... I, I think that that is kind of happening. So. Yeah. He, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here because it's so. He's in such a weird spot. And then, oh, yeah, on top of everything, Trell. Um, yeah. Uh, Trell just. He's, the, we he's a we wrench in the gears. He's a fly in the ointment. He's. Uh, he's a guy is gets, all get out. He gets a random page that we don't know what to do with. A full page with a very odd perspective that makes him look like, you know, a benevolent deity leaning down ab- over somebody. <laughs> mm. It just feels very, very odd. I don't know what to do with him. What do you do with a problem like Trell? Yeah. Whack it with a hammer? Or, did you just make a sound of music reference? I did. I was really disappointed you didn't react immediately because that was out of left field. I'm replying to chat. <laughs> I haven't seen sound of music, so I don't know. What? I know. I'm, I'm a heathen. I'm now really confused. <laughs> I don't know what to do with today anymore. <laughs> I just learned that Jordan has seen the sound of music and Amy hasn't. And the world My- is... My family Upside didn't down. really do musicals. Like, Neither did mine. I still ended up seeing it. I think I've seen clips of it, but if I have seen it, I do not remember most of it. So, sorry. Uh, but it's Julie Andrews in her, in my opinion, second best I, I role. know the hills are alive with the sound of music bit and the do-re-mi thing, but uh-huh. yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, okay, sorry. Don't, don't, don't mimic McConaughey here. All Actually, right, I, right. I was accidentally <laughs> mimicking... Uh, Hey, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> anyway, so I love crossing moving on. Segue to number. <laughs> should we do number six with that lovely subway segue? Yep, there? I got, I got this one. Okay. So this one is from Stephen K. He says, "Hey guys, another show hasn't made it to Oathbringer yet. We're close, guys. But so I close. just finished my third run of it, and it got me thinking. If the immigrant song starts playing when Vin lets loose." What song starts playing in Dalinar's flashbacks when the Black Thorn starts seeing the red mist? I'm thinking something like The Trooper by Iron Maiden. Keep up the good work. Okay, guys, I love this question. It makes me so happy. <laughs> because we get to mix classic rock with, with the Cosmere, and it's just all the wonderful things mashed up together. So so, so these are a few of your favorite things? And he brought it back around. <laughs> 
I don't know how you did that, but it's it's just what he does. I'll give you an on-air slow clap. All right. Man, I feel honored. But uh, this one is this is a hard one. One of the ones that came to mind for me was actually Crazy Train. Because when uh when Dalinar cuts loose as the Blackthorn, he does kind of go off the rails. Mm. And it just it just feels Right. You know, the The problem for me with that one is the lyric, like, once you get into the lyrics, it doesn't quite fit for me. A little bit. Yeah. And so I, I would lean more towards something from like, Iron Maiden's a good pick. Maybe something like Metallica. For me personally, uh, it's going to be Enter the Sandman when he starts seeing the red. Mm. No, 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 because no. It starts it, off slow. Inter then, Sandman is for for Kenton if we can actually get Brandon to write a <laughs> thorough Brandon action sequence. It's definitely not for Kenton, even though it matches up because the Sandman is not about someone who uses sand, but uh, who brings it, death to people. Someone who brings you know <laughs> sleep. Um, it, but it's more because I like the slow buildup of the song. Mm-hmm. And for the record, if you're a Yankees fan, I just know that I hate. Enter the Sandman because of Mariano Rivera. This is only funny to people who know baseball. But he'd walk in to Enter the Sandman. He was the best closer in baseball history. And it sucked because I hate the Yankees. And your team's trying to mount a comeback. And then he comes in from the bullpen and they start playing Enter the Sandman. You're like, oh, it's stupid because he's putting you to bed. And I hate it. It's so cool, but I hate it. (laughs) <laughs> and I didn't like it being cool because I didn't want to love it, but they made me because it was so perfect. Mm. And that's sort of for me. When he's seeing the red, I say enter the Sandman. If you just want when, like, he, you know, does the last catch or anything like that, I just need something from just pure metal, probably Dragon Force, just something pure metal oh. immediately. I need no build up, and I just want it to go insane. Yeah. But, uh,. The point is, Brandon makes things that lean very well to a lot of different songs. I don't know okay. my songs well enough. Like, I, I kept finding ones that I liked the lyrics for more than the actual tune, like, because the tune wouldn't be fast enough or it wouldn't be quite as hard as I would want. But um, I liked Ready to Die by The Under and then For the Glory by All Good Things. And I, they weren't quite right, but they were as close <laughs> as I could find today. So if I find a better one, I will I will post about it. But I those are kind of my picks but they're they're not quite right still yeah for me it's just the intro to to crazy train all right just, this is just this is feels. only gonna make bill laugh but uh i just want whenever kelsier enters a room with his you know general aplomb it's just suddenly just gonna be glorious i hate you <laughs> come on you know you want okay if you don't know what this is look up a uh, glorious i think bobby road i don't it's a wrestler's theme song and it is seven levels of epic <laughs> that they throw onto it and it makes me laugh every single time and so he walks into the middle of his crew and he says these are my boys again this is only funny to a very small segment and that's Sorry. okay my apologies, sort of. No, okay, no, but no, don't apologize. In the theme of this question, I did want to mention just how wonderful Reddit can be in the right circumstances. Sometimes it's an absolute sewer, but other times it's most times, most times it's an absolute sewer. But there are times where gold comes out of it because at one point somebody talked about the scene where Vin and Zane go absolutely nuts on sets. Mm. sets people and i i just made a comment i said every time i read this scene the immigrant song starts playing in my head and Uh read it delivered because they just suddenly we ended up with this thread of people doing line after line you pulled it up right we come from the land where the ash still falls where the sun bleeds red and the mist wraith calls sliver of the gods we push with steel to new lands to fight the horde of great coloss to push and fly beyond i am coming (laughs) On we leap with blades and gore. Our only goal will be the ADM horde. 
dun 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 I was just like, this is wonderful. This it made me grin so big because it just it just kept getting better and better. <laughs> Come from the land where the ash still falls. Mm. We might have to try and make that. Oh gosh, if I had the ability, my gosh. If you want a female singer, I can try. But... Ooh, Doc, uh, Doc FG said he'd like Ozzy. Iron Man? Iron Man. Although yeah. that's that's not Ozzy. That, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I don't know. Black like, I, I recognize the older rock by when it's being played, but I don't ever know the titles or yeah. the artists. That's my problem. Yeah, that's Black Sabbath. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Black Sabbath has a couple you could use as well. Yeah, just the just the hardcore seventies and eighties mm. bands. Hair metal, hair metal lends itself. <laughs> of course, Horde's theme song would be nothing but Bohemian Rhapsody because that's absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, and it's a million I, different. He, he definitely of... <laughs> he definitely feels like a supersonic man. <laughs> He's Mister Fahrenheit. He's out of control. Oh, you broke me again. Speaking of, uh, speak. I, I I can't fully debut this. But I have been playing with some Bohemian yes. Rhapsody stuff. Okay. I'll, ju- I'll just tell you the name. It's called Rishadium Rhapsody. <laughs> I'll leave it at I, that. I've gotten to sample some of the lyrics. When he's, oh, when you when he's, when he's No, it's... I, well, I'm, I'm still workshopping He it. basically, like, stormed into my room. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those, like, well, I can't stop whatever's about to happen, so... Let's just see where he's going with this. The, 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 the ball's already started rolling downhill, so... Nope, there's, <laughs> there's no point in stopping this. It's going down. <laughs> so, yeah. That's Actually, that, that works with your Hoyd reference as well. The ball's already rolling. <laughs> anyway. Nothing stops the Blackthorn when it's entered the mm. battlefield, and that's sort of what happens when I think up alternate lyrics. <laughs> Anyway, the people will thank you for it when it's done. Well, we've got other we've got, yeah, we've we've got other questions that people have sent in and but we're going to start adding those to the end of episodes again um until we come up to you know another uh, aluminum foil hat theory episode which and which we'll, at which point we'll start hoarding them again and put them all together in an episode but we do want to keep you. We had so some of you have sent in questions to us that we do want to discuss, but we, you know, we want to spread the wealth, spread the experience. Did we want to spread it out. Yes. So yeah, but that means that it is time for something else that's exciting, because thanks to our patrons, as you all know, we now are able to hold monthly giveaways. So if you were tuned in at the very beginning and saw the video, or if you've been following our social media accounts, you may have noticed that I was wearing a stunning aluminum foil hat, but you can't have it. This one is mine and I need it to protect me from the emotional allomancers. But we do have a hat to give away. That's almost as cool. Mm. And it, guys, this is really cool. For those of you who are audio-only listeners, he is holding up a beanie. This beanie is blue with silver stitching, and that stitching is a shash brand. It's the word not is mean, em- embroidery. Embroidery. Embroidered. It's, it's not just <laughs> blue. It's Colin blue. Yes. Mm. It's a dark, 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 dark blue, but it has Kaladin's slave brand right on the forehead where it would be on your head. Mm. So, and, guys, so it's yeah. pretty neat. So Who wants to mark themselves for slavery? Temporarily, because you can take this Tem- one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that's the great thing. Is This is a little bit less permanent than... It's really the key feature. And it also doesn't... if we were giving away, you know, servitude, that we'd be a bad podcast. Yes. Also, if we, if we were giving away a, a seared in scar, marking you for slavery, the police might be involved. It would probably get another email from Brandon's lawyers. Yeah. yeah. So, but we, probably we, only we them. That. That's probably where it stops. <laughs> yeah, but this, but this hat is actually sanctioned merchandise from the Brandon Sanderson store, which you also, of course, check out at store.brandonsanderson.com because they're amazing and there's so many really cool goodies. 
Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You definitely should check it out, and not just because they give us cool things in to put in that bag, even though that's not the coolest thing in the bag. No, but we, so we will put up a post on social media in the next day or two, and you'll be able to enter there. So make sure to enter the giveaway, and hopefully you can look like Kaladin went uh, storm blessed. Honor spread because, not included. Because seriously, this hat is awesome. Yes. But yeah. now, as always, we, of course, want to thank our patrons. Y'all are the ones who make it possible for us to keep creating new episodes. The show continues to be free for everybody. But if you want to support us, you know, drop us a buck or two per episode. Head to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. It'll help us, you know, keep making the show, make the show even better. And... When you do become a patron, you will get immediate access to our Discord channel, where we've got an awesome group of people. Now, you will need to connect your Discord account to your Patreon account to make sure that that happens. And then on Discord, you'll be able to continue the discussion about the Cosmere. You'll be able to posit even more aluminum foil hat theories and discuss others that people have. We've got a channel for it over there. Mm -hmm. We've got a specific channel that people can go in just to talk their crazy theories. Um... You will also get early access to any bonus content we produce, as well as content like the 6-7, exclusive access to con- content like the 6-7, which is a collection of seven pieces of content that the hosts find every couple of weeks that we post and we want to share with you that because we just think it's swell. So beyond that, you are also automatically entered into our giveaways the giveaways aren't exclusive to patrons, but they are, and they're free for everybody to enter. The patrons just get their first enter entry automatically. You still have the max of, depending on the giveaway, you'll have the same max number of entries as everybody else. And of course, you're just going to help us keep making the show, improve the quality of it, make more episodes, hopefully more frequent episodes, because the, you know we've gone through almost every book and yet there's still so much more to talk about and we're not done yet so we just want to keep this thing going now this week we want to give a special thanks to another new patron ashley p to and to ashley and all of our current and past patrons once again thank you so much y'all are amazing (laughs) (laughs) for the audio only listeners that was uh, i kissed my hand and i kind of blew a kiss thing i don't know i'm trying something for the other audio-only listeners, the person who's been talking about the audio-only listeners is Jordan. So thank you for that, Jordan. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, don't let the fact that we just plowed through a ton of aluminum foil hat theories stop you from writing in. We love hearing your theories. We want more. We want more and more and more. We're going to continue to do periodic aluminum foil hat episodes like tonight's, taking listener questions and theories and overanalyzing them beyond all reason. So keep sending us more topics, theories, and questions at CosmereStudies at gmail.com. Of course, we've each got our own outside projects that have nothing to do with the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies podcast. So, Jordan, where can we find your work? What are you doing? Uh, well, at twitch.tv slash splicestream, tomorrow, if you're watching live, if not, at some point in the past relative to when you started listening to this, I, along with a partner of mine named Burr, have launched the Professional Amiibo League. Um, we are taking this a lot more seriously now and we are getting prizes. And if you'd like to help with the prize pool, there's a way to do that. Best way to find out twitch.tv slash splice stream. But the part I'm most excited about is my patrons, uh, helped pitch, not patrons, my, uh, subs on my Twitch channel pitched in and helped me get a stream deck so that I can do things. Oh no. Like this. <laughs> Super <laughs> Smash Brothers! Amongst many other things. There'll be no living with them after this. I mean, there was hardly any living with me already, so, you know. This is only a slight step down. <laughs> oh, man. Well, cool. And, Amy, how about you? Where can we find your stuff? Um, I'm on Facebook at Coincidence Cosplay and Props, on Instagram. Instagram at coincidence underscore cosplay and on Twitter at coincidence cosp because my name is too long. Um, I have not been making a whole lot of progress because as I said, I was on vacation last week and jokingly, like we were talking about scars and things. I am going to have a scar. I can't show you the angle, but I have a little band aid because my brother took off a mole. So yay. 
My brother scarred me for life. So anyway. That's that's sort of what brothers are for. I know. Anyway, yeah, like, yeah. So that's what I've been doing, was vacationing, you know. Is your brother a trained medical professional? He's a dermatologist, yes. Okay. (laughs) I was just wondering if just, like, things at your, you know, family reunions just start getting real biblical. No, I figured I'd rather pay him to take off my mold than some random person out here, because I made, you know, whatever. He's Um, actually just a guy with a power sander. (laughs) Oh, that's terrible. Anyway. So, yeah, so that's what I was doing, and I have, I just need to fix up my Eleanor costume from Brave, and then finish up my, my Anna from Ralph Breaks the Internet, and that's kind of what I'm doing, and wrangling children. So, yes. Nice. Mm-hmm. Not all and at the same time. No, no, thank goodness, no. And when I'm not here, I've got board game reviews over at the Innkeeper's Table at www.innkeeperstable.com, as well as general posts about board games and other things that I enjoy board game related over on social media. So go check those out on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. What is Twitter? Twitter. Twitter, Twitter is the Chinese knockoff uh, version of Twitter. Uh, so yeah, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all of those, the profile is at Innkeeper's Table. For those of you who can't become a Patreon, patron just now, uh, maybe just head over to iTunes or Spotify or whatever app you use to listen to the podcast and drop us a five star review. It will really help us out. We, and we would really appreciate it. Now, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7 30 PM Pacific time, 10 30 PM Eastern, our listeners can find our videos on YouTube or the audio versions of our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google play, basically anywhere that you can find awesome podcasts by doing a search for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. Now for our next episode, we are hopefully going to be able to finish off our discussion of White Sand with Volume 3, assuming it comes out. Yeah. Uh, that that release date is sort of shifted around it a bit. I, going back. <laughs> I think we should have the, the digital version by then, but no promises. If yeah. not, we might be stepping into Oathbringer a little bit early. <gasps> Actually, Again, just the beginning, about, Amy. <laughs> yeah, we should probably talk about how we're doing Oathbringer, since that'll be different from uh, the previous two we did. I think we already talked about that. Did we not? Did no, we? We, no we, didn't, we didn't talk about okay. it on air. Okay, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be split. Instead of looking at Kaladin, Shalon, Dalinar, and looking at it through that perspective, we're just going to be going in chronological order. So we're going to be looking at part five, or part part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, each of those will get their own episode. We might even have episode six where we discuss the interludes and all the good stuff. The epigrams Mm -hmm. we might be able to talk about while we're talking about the respective parts, but I don't know how it's going to actually play out because it's a little different than we've done Stormlight books in the past. So we'll see how that. But it it definitely will make it easier for readers to follow along with us with it being a smaller amount. And most Mm -hmm. importantly, I don't know if uh, you have noticed this, but Oathbringer is big. Um, it's a large book. 1,300 pages. <laughs> yeah. So, this is why I keep making these sounds of terror. Just so you all know, this is the reason that Brandon did not name the second book in the series, The Book of Endless Pages. Because that was its original title. And then he realized exactly what he was saying. So. It's just a, a, little, a little too on the nose. <laughs> but yeah. So we would love to have you join us for that. So please join us in chat during the live stream here on Twitch on July 22nd, 2019. In the meantime, though, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's There's always always another 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 secret. secret.